Here's another one of those crazy ideas I found on YouTube that I don't think is going to work. And I'm not about to suggest that you can't do this in a different way, but I am about to suggest that I have a few things you need to think about before stacking a bunch of concrete bags on top of each other to create a retaining wall. Now, maybe if you're going to use this for six rows or less, six rows of concrete bags, maybe you're not going to have a problem. And maybe if you stack them differently, you might not have a problem. But what I'm about to show you here should provide you with everything you need to know about why your large retaining wall built out of concrete bags probably isn't going to work. So let's take a look at a regular retaining wall. It's usually going to be built something like this. It's going to have a large footing with a bunch of rebar in it to prevent the soil or the moisture in the soil from pushing the wall over. And I don't know how you're going to do that just by stacking bags on top of each other. So even if the bags were to hold, you're still going to be dealing with the pressure from the soil behind the bags. And in reality, that's all you need to know for the video. You can stop watching it right here because I don't think by rearranging the bags somehow you're going to solve this problem. And of course, we can take a look at what the wall's eventually going to look like after the paper wears off, which might not be a big deal, except for the mess that it's going to make on your property. And another problem you could deal with will be tree roots. And trust me, the tree roots will love a wall like this where they can get the roots in between the bags. And then, of course, do what they do best. And that will be to get a little larger over time and speed up the process of destroying a wall like this. So what if we go ahead and put some plastic or some type of a moisture barrier behind the bags of concrete? Will this solve our problem? Probably not. Again, we don't have the large footing like we have over here or a structurally reinforced solid wall. And even if we can prevent the tree roots or moisture from coming through here, we might not be able to prevent it from going underneath or prevent the massive amount of soil behind the retaining wall from pushing this thing over. And if you do use the plastic, you're going to have to make sure that it is positioned in a way to eliminate all of the moisture from coming through and not just some of it. Because in a situation like this, all of the moisture that settles on the ground in front of the retaining wall can soak up into the lower section. The moisture that's behind the top of the retaining wall can go around it if the moisture barrier isn't tall enough. And I'm not about to suggest that trapping the moisture behind the retaining wall is going to be a good idea either. It could increase the force behind the retaining wall and cause it to fail. And an example of that might look something like this, where we have the wall tilting forward at the top. Another thing most retaining walls will have will be a gravel lined section behind it and some type of a drainage system that will allow the water that gets trapped behind the retaining wall to be removed from this area. Another thing I would like to point out is that the back of the retaining wall is usually going to have some type of waterproofing material to prevent moisture from absorbing into the retaining wall from this side. And for those of you who want to build this wall out of your concrete bags anyway, and you're thinking, hey, why don't I just install the gravel behind my concrete bags along with my drainage system? And that's probably not going to work. You can remove the water. You can prevent the tree roots from entering into the bags along with the water that's going to be trying to go around this thing will usually be enough to destroy a taller wall. And I don't know what the height of that wall would be, but I can tell you that something like this is going to work a lot better than something a little taller. Now, I wouldn't use this method, period. This would not be something I would be using for a straight retaining wall. I've seen this done on curved retaining walls. You might have a better chance at something like that working than you will a straight wall because I've seen small retaining walls built out of sandbags before that seem to work pretty good until the canvas surrounding the sandbag starts to fall apart.